Today we're going to bake a bread so delicious that it will literally knock your socks off. Well, not literally, but it's really good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sune, and I'm a food geek. Today we're going to bake a chocolate sourdough bread with uh, raisins and toasted hazelnuts. As you may or may not know, I uh, have a little business making bean-to-bar chocolate, which means I make chocolate directly from the cocoa beans. So I'm, of course, going to be using my own chocolate for this bread. If you're interested uh, in looking at the variety of chocolates I have, you can uh, follow the link in the description. So what's not to love about a bread with chocolate, raisins, and hazelnuts? Let's get started. The written recipe, the ingredients, and the amounts are linked in the description. We'll start in the morning. Uh, we'll mix everything for the Levan. Uh, add 50 grams of sourdough starter, 50 grams of bread flour, and 50 grams of spelt flour, and 100 grams of water. Mix thoroughly so that everything is completely combined. Put an elastic band around the container so that you can monitor the growth. Then we'll do the autolyse. In a bowl, combine 658 grams of bread flour, 72 grams of Dutch processed cocoa powder, 146 grams of spelt flour. Mix it all really well. Then add 529 grams of water. Mix it all together uh, so that all the flour is hydrated. The mixture can be a bit stiff, so uh, if you need to knead it lightly, that's fine. Cover with a wet dish cloth until needed. Then we'll need to ready the raisins. Uh, add 100 grams of raisins to a bowl and uh, pour over 50 grams of control. If you don't like to use alcohol, you can use uh, orange juice instead of control. Once the lavan has doubled, it's time to mix the dough. On top of the auto least uh, flour, add 18 grams of salt, 27 grams of honey, 72 grams of brown sugar and uh, 50 grams of water. Combine it uh, a little bit and then uh, on the top then add 190 grams of the Levan. Because the dough is a little stiff you need to work a little bit hard to combine everything so don't skimp out on proper mixing here. Once you're done leave the dough to rest for 30 minutes. Then it's time to mix in all the add-ins. Wet your hands and uh, loosen the dough from the bowl. Drizzle about half of the hazelnuts over top of the dough and uh, do a couple of stretch and folds to incorporate. And then pour the rest of the hazelnuts over top and stretch and fold a couple times more. And then do the same thing with the raisins, add them over top of the dough and stretch and fold a couple of times. Make sure to uh, discard uh, whatever contour uh, hasn't been soaked up by the raisins. Leave to rest for 30 minutes. Now it's time for a bulk fermentation. We'll do a three sets of stretch and folds spaced out by 30 minutes. To do a set of stretch and folds, uh, you should first wet your hands and loosen the dough from the sides of the bowl. And grab the back of the dough with one hand and stretch the dough as far as it goes without breaking. And then fold it in over the dough. Turn the bowl a quarter turn and repeat. Stretch the dough as far as it goes and fold in over itself. Then turn a quarter turn again, stretch the dough as far as it goes and fold in over the dough. And the last one, quarter turn, stretch the dough as far as it goes and fold it in over the dough. Then leave the dough to rest uh, covered for about 30 minutes. And for me, when the dough is resting, it's time to work on other skills. After the 30 minutes are up, um, do the second stretch and fold. You'll do exactly the same as before. Leave to rest for another 30 minutes. After those 30 minutes up, you should do the third stretch and fold. Uh, you'll know what to do. It's the same as before. Once the third stretch and fold is over, you can do a window pane test to check the gluten development, but it is a little bit difficult because of all the add-ins. It's hard to pull a window pane. Because of the long auto lease, you should be okay. 
Now uh, leave the dough to rest uh, until it's grown by 20 to 40 percent and looks more puffy. It usually takes about two and a half hours at, at regular room temperature. If it's warmer, it might go faster. If it's colder, it might go slower. Be sure to check on the dough once in a while so uh, you get it at the right time. And then when the bulk is over, it's time to divide and shape the dough. Dump out your dough on the unfloured kitchen counter and divide it into two equally sized pieces. Put one piece to the side and pre-shape the dough. You'll do it like this. Flip the dough over, grab uh, one corner and pull it out and fold it up on top of the dough. Then proceed with the other three corners. So you kind of fold it up like a letter. Then uh, flip over the dough and put the bench scraper behind the dough. Pull it forward over the unfloured table so that the front of the dough will get uh, pulled down in the front. This will tighten the dough on the top and that's what we want. Once you can't get any further, you put the dough scraper in front of the dough and push it uh, away from yourself and twist it around so that you get behind the dough again. Then keep going until you have a very taut surface. Continue with the other dough ball. Once you're done, leave them to rest on the kitchen counter uh, for 20 minutes. Then uh, when the 20 minutes are up, you should uh, flour your bannetons. You should flour them liberally with rice flour. I'm using a cloth insert here. I uh, really want to have a relatively even distribution of the rice flour and that works better when you use a cloth. Then you should uh, shape the dough and uh, you'll do exactly like the pre-shaping. So you flip over the dough. It's important to flip it over so that the taut side is downwards. And then pull each corner and fold it in over the dough. Flip the dough back and pull it over the table until it's very taut. Once you're done shaping, you should flip the dough so that the top of the dough goes into the banneton uh, with the top side down. Repeat with the other dough ball and put them in plastic bags. Put them in the fridge overnight to retard. The next morning when it's time to bake, uh, add a baking steel or pizza stone to your oven and on top you should place your combo cooker or a Dutch oven and heat the oven to 260 degrees Celsius, that's 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important to uh, preheat for a while so that everything is super saturated with the heat. It'll really help your oven spring. Once you're ready to bake, grab your dough from the fridge and uh, flip it onto a peel with parchment paper. Because of the look I'm going for here, I will add a little extra rice flour so that it's completely white on the outside. Uh, that means that, that when the scores open up, they'll be brown in there and that gives it a really nice look, I think. I do a cross score on my bread, but you can do whatever you like. Once you've finished scoring, add the dough to the Dutch oven and put the lid over top. Close the oven and bake for 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes are up, you should lower the heat to 230 degrees, 450 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, remove the top. Bake for an additional 25 to 30 minutes. It's a little difficult to judge this bread because it's so brown, but uh, don't be afraid if it gets a little dark in the corners. That'll just add extra taste. When the bread is done, take it out and put it on a wire rack to cool. Continue with the other bread using the exact same method. Once that bread is done, put it on the wire rack and let it cool completely before you cut into it. And that's it. We made an awesome sourdough chocolate bread. That's how you make a chocolate sourdough bread. It tastes absolutely wonderful all on its own or with some beautiful butter on top. If you've been following me for a while, you know I kind of have a butter obsession, but uh, don't worry, I have it under control. Hello? Yes, uh, oh yeah, thanks for calling back. Uh, you know, I kind of need a pound. Uh, can you get that for me? Alright, see you. Thanks. Bye. Well, let's look at this bread. I've been looking forward to this part. <laughs> Thank you. 
If you bake this bread and post it to Instagram, please tag me so I can see what you made. You can find a link to my Instagram in the description. If you have any problems with your sourdough bread or your starter, just post all your questions in the comments below and I will do my best to help you. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss any future videos. See you next week. Thank you.